You gotta have your, your, your sunglasses on though. <laughs> oh, no, oh, I, I did. Wait. Hey folks, Greg here, and today we have a special treat for you. We're gonna be unboxing and reviewing uh, from HasLab, their Spangler's Proton Pack here on Shack News. Stick around, you won't wanna miss this. Uh, we're here, we're live. Uh, I'm Greg, I'll be your host for the unboxing, and with me always is my partner in crime and leader of the NorCal Ghostbusters, Chris Nance. Hi, Greg. Hey, Chris. Uh, if you haven't seen Chris before, he's been in all the Ghostbuster stuff. Our fearless leader and experimental equipment technician, he's gonna help break down the Proton Pack with me and take a look at this thing, which was kickstarted uh, like a year and a half ago. We're for, uh, people are finally getting their hands on these. We got ours yesterday, and uh, we're gonna open it up and check it out. So Chris, will you do the honors, please? Oh, geez, you're trusting me? This is probably the biggest unboxing we've ever done on the site. Oh no, I see the arcade one up. These ones are pretty big. There, go ahead and pull up. Shimmer shake. Beautiful box. Woo! I for one would have loved, like, you know, I would have oh. paid for an extra $300 to have like a an pelican actual case, case. A pelican yeah. case made a specifically trunk. for it, yeah. I haven't gotten a good look at the box de like art detailing, but I actually like this on the front where it's got like this, uh, this printed art of like a fake biometric lock thing. Oh, okay, it has a thumbprint slick lock? Yeah, yeah. It makes it kind of implies that it's got like a biometric lock going on. <laughs> okay, so instructions right on so top. So the top, there. I don't know if you guys can see it on the thing, but the top is like faux wood paneling. And it's, it's obviously, they're trying to replicate the, uh, the, pan, the wood panel puzzle mm -hmm. from Afterlife that Phoebe does to find the, uh, the trap. I didn't know this is a little ghost trap. Yeah. It's it's ghost trap light. Oh, hey, yeah, a <laughs> minute. Very limited. Phantasmical on. samples. Handle with extreme care. Uh oh. There we go. Get some more bracing. Oh, and it's right there. Yeah. That? No. This. What oh. is that? Oh, look at that. Oh my god. What is that? That's a silver that's silver Sharpie weather. Someone took a Sharpie and just did this. Oh well, hold on, we'll we'll we'll, we'll get it out. We'll get it out. Hold on. Yeah. So we took it all out of the box. All the boxes now, all the boxes that came in one, two, three, like four different like miniature boxes in place and they're all on the other side of the camera now. So now we just have the pack out, all the stuff, the side stuff we'll do a little bit later sitting down. But like you will need four D batteries and a screw and a Phillips head screwdriver, which we grabbed. And then the thing that I'm noticing too is like I'm actually really impressed with some of the packaging details I'm noticing here. They went really out of their way to protect some elements of the pack in shipping. There's actually wire in there. That's actually that's not something you only see in a toy like that kind that's of detail. That's nice detailing. Yeah. Which means Oh man. It comes with straps for the people who don't want to put Alice frames on them. We're actually probably gonna do another Alice frame video, but uh, let's, can we take, like, what do you think of these straps? Cause I want to take them off before so, we start messing so with So they're, they're honestly not terrible quality. Like they're a really good, like, like one-to-one -one replica of the actual Alice straps. Some of the hardware is wrong. Like just the strapping hardware, like they should be small metal buckles, not oh, these not big plastic. plastic. Yeah. But like for something that they're just trying to make a bunch of, they look great. They look fine. The padding mass is right. Mass produced is the yeah. key word here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The for being a mass produced thing. I do not like, like the. I don't like the straps. It's honestly. I need the Alice frame. That's the problem. Yeah, I need yeah. the Alice frame. Yeah, you need the frame on there. <laughs> Which so. is coming today. It might actually ring the doorbell when we. <laughs> as we're as, as we're, we're filming. filming. Yes. But it is nice. I will say, like for those people who aren't familiar with Alice frames or what they do or how to put them on, like it is nice that they include the straps. Well, and then also mounting hardware for those Alice frames is, is included with this, which which I think is probably in one of the boxes. It's probably one of the boxes. Camera. So here's the pack as is, and at first glance, there's a lot of stuff that you and I like about it, and then there's something that definitely we don't like about it. Oh man. Uh, the first thing, the first thing which is unfortunate, the first thing I noticed when I opened it was this weathering. It's, it's literally some dude on an assembly line with a Sharpie doing this. <laughs> And I, I almost prefer they didn't even do that. Yeah, especially with like the finish on the plastic itself, it really, like it doesn't show as silver at all. It shows as like Sharpie marks. Yeah. So like that's that's definitely gonna get redone. And that's here, up here too, up here, if you can see, because it's hard to see with the glare. 
because this, this pack's kind of glossy, but like here, all along the uh, the, um, the cyclotron is that thing. On the outside of the pack, it's scribbled. It's like someone took a Sharpie and scribbled, and they, they didn't even do it on the edges. They just scribbled. Like, mm -hmm. they, you're supposed to just do it on the edge, right? Like a little bit of you weathering. Wanna, yeah, you want to <laughs> highlight the edge where it would naturally come off and yeah, expose yeah. metal. And but the... it's some dude in an assembly line doing 19,000 of these, so yeah. I, I get it. But yeah. like, yeah, we have to paint that over. Oh, there's a part somewhere that's that's in yeah, one so, of the boxes. So there's, there's the, the ion armor rod and like end cap, and then and there's actually, oh, oh, whoa, that is funky. Right. They did mention that they they made this pack with modders in mind. Oh, so yes. like everything is not mo not everything is modular, but a lot of stuff is removable or replaceable or easily accessible. Yes, to and do that, that is you know to to their credit, like the the little things that I'm seeing that I don't like are little things that are very easy to pop off, like so. Yeah, and it literally just pops right in. So it's it's going to be stuff that's like going to be very easy for me uh, to go back through and just like you know, take a drill or a Dremel and, and sort of put the right thing on. And the weight isn't too bad. How much would you say that weighs without having? Because I don't have a scale that's medium size. I have a large one that might not read it, and then I have a small one. So put it around 10, 12. But you think? Yeah. It's definitely heavier than one on my wall. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Oh no. Yeah. If it's heavier than than your uh, no one pack, then almost I want to say it's close, more on like the fifteen plus side. For like what it is though, like at first glance, it looks it looks good. Like not terrible. Like not terrible at all. Like just just the weathering is killing me. Chris is the like the foremost screen accurate proton pack person in the Tri County area, so he'll tell you <laughs> stuff that's not accurate or that is accurate or that's misdone or done on purpose or whatnot. So like after. After we initially took it out, was the second thing you noticed other than the weathering? This clip art, it looks nicer than the one that comes on the actual, uh, the Spangler ones. So it, and it, it looks like the spacing on it is probably correct for a real clippard. So that's gonna be an easy swap. You know, once again, it's like all the little things that I'm noticing here are things that are very easily swapped for something that is correct mm -hmm. or looks better. So like the clip art, all of these little fittings that I'm already screwing around with, like that's removable. Yeah. Like why yeah, is that? All, is there? That's, no, just doesn't serve a purpose. Just removable. If you want to, I guess all, they're all removable from both ends. So you can get like a real one in there if you don't want the molded one. Uh, or so you can paint. Oh wow! They, yeah, so you can paint. So too. they they really did have you know fans in mind when they designed this, especially this final you know what we're getting as the final product because we know that there's a few little under the hood things that have changed subsequently. So let's uh, let's put the batteries in and turn this bad boy on. All right. All right. So now the moment of truth is we turn it on. It's an afterlife mode standard. So we hit the switch, the newly added switch. Mm-hmm. And I'm not kind of interested because like it's really hard to gauge sound on these things. So we're in person, so we'll try to describe it as best we can, and Chris can tell you if it's too louder. Moo! <laughs> the vibration. You can turn that off though. Yeah. I know you can turn it off. I, I believe so. Yeah. And how loud does it get? I think that's it. I think so. Yeah. So that's. That's nice. The crank knob that they, this casted crank knob that they made is, is actually pretty nice. I wish it was mounted a little bit looser so you could actually use the crank. So you you, you told me this. Yeah, you that's a frosted this. lens. So let's turn this down so people can hear it. So like, wait, what? So this is a frosted lens, but as you, in the camera, it looks like it's just one flat light, but I can see the individual LEDs. But the, the individual LED lights are there. That was one of my yep. concerns. Yep, yep. But so it looks, I mean, other than the frosted glass, you can see the individual LEDs. That's a really loud vibration. <laughs> Uh-huh. Is that from, where's that at? Where's that half the vibration Center, motor? probably. What are your thoughts on the speaker? I know yours has like a double. It's quiet. My pack is not a fair comparison because I have like dual speakers built into mine. I'm built to be as loud as possible. I think cool thing is like people are, I think we're asking like why it's up here. It's so you can hear it. it this yeah. is so by it's your head so you can hear Because if it was back here, People behind you can hear it, but you can't hear it. Yeah, correct. I have the same problem with my pack. I can't really hear it when it's on, but people behind, standing behind me can. So that's actually an interesting idea. And again, yeah. I'm sure you can increase the speaker on that. That's not terrible. I like, like you said, I like how it turns so it doesn't snap off or anything. Yes, and it gives, it does the proper crank knob action and everything. So it's got the little, this little bit spins correctly and all that. Uh, it looks the correct scale and size and everything and detailing on it. That's nice. Those are hard to find, so. Now let's turn this off and see what it sounds like when it, 
I like that sound. That's a mm. sound that we don't have online. I mean, it, I think it's a little slightly different in the GB Fan Board pack. Slightly yeah. different, but that, yeah. I like that sound. The stickers come pre, I think that's printed on. No. They're not? That is a sticker. The oh, weathering it, is printed on the sticker. Oh, yes, yes, absolutely. So the weathering is pre-printed on the sticker, but again, that's that's easy to do. And I think that this does come with extra stickers. So if you want to peel these off and replace the stickers and paint it over yourself, you can. Yeah, with a, with a set of labels that are all clean and you know, pristine looking, which like some of the sticker placement on this, like I'm already seeing like there you go. the HGA badge is sideways. <laughs> well, I think that's because this, this looks it's like just, it's removable. It looks like it, it pops out, like it turns and twists and pops out. Right, but either top. way, its final resting position needs to have these two posts Straight. in the correct position. Right. Like that. Yeah. So, yeah. So there's there's just like some minor stuff of like sticker placement. They're not the highest quality stickers, which is not a huge surprise. I think for four dollars you might be able to get like some of the boards and the and the the, the body, and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then the yeah, and you it's could, not even paint, painted. You have to you, paint it. You could afford the shell plus tax and shipping. Right. And that's about it for four hundred. Now the thing that you've been talking about this last week is the the cloth cable. Yes. Now that you've seen it in person, what are your thoughts? <laughs> it's ugly. I I actually. That's fine. No, no, we're here to review it. This yeah. wasn't given to us for free. We're not sponsored by Hasbro. This is a yeah. and, and remember, yeah. Chris is the connoisseur of proton packs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To a layman's eye, you know, in person, no one's gonna look at this and notice anything different. I see it, and because I have a spool of the real thing, I'm like, this is this washed out yellow color. Yeah, is... I, it's really bright. In the movies, it was much dirtier. I, I mean, I, but I guess you can you can just do a wa like an ink wash, right, yeah, over yeah. that and mix That's, some and black paint and just paint it over. Effectively what they did, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not super impressed with the ribbon cable itself, but again, that's another one of those minor details that's like, you know, we've seen in a few videos so far, like that's, this part is actually very easy to take out and replace. So that, you know, it's another one of those little spots that like, they had modders in mind when they put it together. So it's not bad, like, uh, well, how about the quality of like the, the cables and stuff like that? Like they're all molded, so, it's all molded plastic, which means, which so, is, for me it's good because that means it's durable. That yeah. means it's not gonna pop off or break or bend and oh, snap that's, off. That's interesting. Does it, not, does it not open? No, it's a rubber sleeve cast over the split loom. Oh, weird. Yes, and it's splitless <laughs> loom. Like it is real splitless loom, but then there's this this little, I don't know if you can really see, like this oh, yeah. fake, fake wire the bundle fake wire that's <laughs> protruding out of the loom. That's a rubber thing that's cast onto there. That's because it's it's on the proton back in the movie, right? Yep. So they tried to replicate that without having to go in meticulously in there and, and, and run wires. wiring that gets exposed, yeah. So what, you wanna get this, you wanna get this open, right? Yeah. So let's so. put this down and let me change the angle so we can get right over it and people can see. Beautiful, okay, so now you guys are seeing a top-down, our top-down-ish angle of the proton pack. Uh, this is the ionizer. Ion, ion arm. Ion arm. End cap. You know what it is? My, my, my mind's going to Spirits Unleashed. Ionizer uh -huh. pods. Yeah, yeah. The ion end cap, and it just it, it just plugs like a plug-in and just right in there. Just snaps right That's on. That's it. And it stays on just because it's like maybe a millimeter thicker, uh, thinner than it should be, and it just, it's it. And it's, it's actually, it's pretty, Pretty snug fit, yeah. Because you know, I've seen you know, I've seen when I was redoing my research on proton packs for custom proton packs, this thing is the thing that breaks all the time because yeah. it's a resin cast, right? Ooh, and people paint so, over it. Some, 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 some of them are, yeah. Some. Yeah, on a on like a resin cast one, that tends to be the problem. Yeah. Metal, that's so, really nicely done. That's better than mine. That's better than my custom so one. Let me let me set that down in camera view here, so you can see the actual knurling. So that is correct. That is nice. That is that is a detail that you tend to you don't tend to find off you know on uh, uh, lesser packs so to speak, um, yeah and that's a single solid. This like, looks better than mine. Than mine, I think mine's plastic. The only thing it's missing are the, ca the cap head screws. Well, they, that's, we can glue those on, right? Or? That's an easy fix. Yeah, you just drill a couple that's holes. That's a really cool. Like I mean, like this was definitely a piece that someone pushed for. Like we're doing real metal for the eye. Like you know what I mean? To get, yes. it's, that's hard to replicate, especially in like without using real metal, even and the paint. The, that whole, even the placement on the, on the resistor is like, needs to be moved. There were definitely sacrifices they made because of either manufacturing or budget. One of those two. So, Whoa! It's real metal. That's good. That's great. It felt like it was socketing into a metal. Because uh, yours is metal. This yeah. is metal on yours in a lot of packs. Mine's yeah. resin yeah. or plastic on my custom one. And then the ion or the bumper you're do slides this? right you're, off. You, you, you just know how to do this? No way. Yeah. And it indexes <laughs> one way too. Shut up. That's that. amazing. You just you don't even need the instructions. You're like, I, I know how to do this. Yeah. It's not my first cyclotron. <laughs> but ours doesn't come apart like that. Not my first Rodeo, sir. 
right, so there's the ribbon cable off. And then I think I can Everything's just go. pretty modular to make. Do these things come off? Okay. These so there is the inside of the cyclotron. Oh wow, the inside of that. I mean, I've seen I've seen little previews in the beta bills. This looks great. Those this little, looks fantastic. Yeah. This, even even and then all of these little details are all. Now those don't serve a purpose, right? It's just for aesthetic. In terms of actual like like electronics function, no. That is all aesthetic stuff. But that is present there in the afterlife pack when we see Phoebe take the cover off. Oh, I do want to do something, put the cover back on real fast. I do want to turn it on because supposedly it has some interaction. Yes. Lights and sound features. So literally all you need from that to replace the ribbon cable is the is the end cap. And you can cut that out. Nice. So let me turn this down. All right, all right, we might be able to hear the sound. All right. So we take the ribbon cable off. It just shuts off when I took the cover, take the cover off. So that's neat detailing there. Why is that there? Like, can you take it out? No, it's molded. Oh, no, that that's means- That's just physical detailing that you, I th Oh, that smoke kit's gonna be hard to put in there without in the way you're gonna have to chop yep. it off. Yep, that is, uh, no, it's not. Look inside, you can see the seam. You can pull it out or, or access so it. You can access if, it from the back. They were very mod, cons what's the word I'm looking for? Very, very mod. Considerate for considerate modders. Considerate for modders. Yeah. To make sure everything can be moved e semi-easily. And there will be some drilling you might have to do, but like everything is really easily removable. Most of the stuff. All the cables certainly are. Uh, I like the real metal switches in there. That's ooh, a good touch. Ooh, 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 more metal. That's a real nut. That's a real brass nut. That's nice. But that doesn't spin. Yeah. So the it's it's the, I was under the impression that that thing would actually spin. No. But it, it's a vibration motor somewhere. I think it's here, somewhere in the center of the pack. That is a cool piece. It definitely needs to be painted. Yeah. Although, that said, I want to see if we can get a good look at like the paint on there. Like that's actually not a bad. It's like, not bad. I, I'd want to. I'd want to paint some of the bolts a little bit, darken the bolts. Some of the wiring on there would need to be on the side. Needs to be yeah, definitely need to be painted all that, there. All of that cast in wiring stuff. Yeah. And like I said before, just if you're gonna mod this, just be careful. Uh, sometimes when you paint stuff, it does add thickness to it. It might not go in flush anymore. So just be very careful. Go slow. Look at videos. Ask questions. Ask Chris questions. Yeah. Always, always he test knows. your paint. Always test your paint before you go to go to, you know, paint big surfaces. Make sure that what you're using is going to work on the material that you're using it on. You know, all that stuff. That's real metal bolt too. Yep. And then these are two real switches that. Control they, the 84 mode and the rumble, right? Correct. Yeah, one one is cur is controlling the actual. Uh, now, Chris, the vibration motor and which which, which one? one's which? Which one's which, Chris? <laughs> Mister, I know how to do this without instructions. The left switch controls the rumble motor. The right switch controls the 84 versus afterlife mode. How could you possibly know that? <laughs> There's no way. How could you possibly know without looking at the instructions? There's no way. <laughs> Oh. You know the best the best compliment that I've ever gotten was on Reddit, uh, and it was somebody somebody replying to me saying, "Now this guy proton packs." <laughs> That's amazing. That's absolutely <laughs> incredible. Okay, so you said the left switch is the rumble. Correct. So we're trying to rumble off. We we appreciate. It made it a little noise. It, it, we appreciate the feature, but it is so loud. It's almost louder than the speaker. I almost yeah. <laughs> I, I, it's it kind of makes me want to crack one of these open just to see the size of the speaker and and consider replacing it. Cause, you know uh, when when Adam Savage opened his pack, everything looked really like he did tear it off really haphazardly. But like once he got it off, it, stuff looked really straightforward. Yeah. Like your pack when you opened it up, everything's really clear where the lines go, and so they that, that is a plus. And this turns it to 84 mode. Right? Correct. It's supposed to. That's awesome. Uh, let's put this, the, the detail on the back of, back of this is amazing. Oh, oh I know. You guys can see yeah. that, that's so good. The inner detail on that on that cover is. Like they didn't have to do that. I mean, none of our packs have this. No, <laughs> no nobody's proton pack before Afterlife had anything like that. Because they didn't know. Yeah, yeah we've never seen like... inside the cyclotron well, like put it that. Back, yeah, put it back on. So let's, let's do this in order then. So I, so. 
this, it looks like, okay, does, can that tighten more? Okay, it can, yeah. so just be careful, because I thought maybe it had it's, that side top where it starts to screw after it's tightened so much. No, no it's it's metal to metal on the end there, okay. so you should be safe. That's another one of those threads that you're safe to tighten down as much as you want. And this is the ED4 mode, we're gonna turn this on now. That's the GB board sound effect for sure. Oh, and now I see exactly how they got that afterlife style cyclotron effect. You see it's three LEDs in a curl. Yours has like a cone and it's like a, yeah, it's slightly different. Yeah. Um, let's turn this up a little bit. Can we turn this? So yeah, the speaker is definitely not, it's not huge, but again, you know, like sacrifices for price and manufacturing, we get it. Okay, mm -hmm. Hasbro team, we get it. We're just being overly critical because that's our job. For uh, for four hundred dollars for a one to one full scale pack, though, like like that's a detail that you can fix for a lot cheaper than yeah. four hundred dollars after the fact. I just wish it was more really like they did the Haslab, but like now, like that's it, like th that you're done. Like there's no do overs. There's mm -hmm. no <laughs> I messed mm -hmm. up. I need to buy another one. Like just so just be 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 cautious. Yep. Uh, so I like the eighty four sound. Uh, now that the vibration is off, uh, I can hear the speaker a little bit better. I don't know if you guys can see it again. Like I said, it's it's. The frosted glass is a weird choice. I don't know why they did that. I bet they could get it, massive amounts of it for cheap. I want to see, is that a separate piece? I feel a seam. It's glued in, I've seen it, it's glued it's in. It's glued in? It's glued in, okay. so you can swap so it out. You have to nightmare. cut it and put it in, but it's you can see the LEDs. Yeah. It's just, it's all the diffusion off the cameras, you can't see it, yep. so, so it's kind of hard to see. You can kind of hear, my speaker's right by it. It's not this. It's not that loud, but you know what? Like. When you don't want it to be obnoxiously loud, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. well, I guess you could have it be obnoxiously to, loud. I, I turned mine off after an hour or so, the sound, just because it's just a little droney. Yeah, I mean, you know, after, like, because especially using the electronic setup that we use for our packs, uh, it will eventually get to the end of the sound file and loop around on itself, yeah. and you can hear it loop. Uh, and that's usually about the only time that I'm actually conscious of the, so of the noise behind me. I usually just kind of drown, it just, it's just you know brown noise or black noise to or you know background noise to me. You know, it doesn't really stand out to me. <laughs> that's a good sound. I know that's not a, that's not exactly the sound on the GB fans board. It's slightly different. Or yeah. Am I wrong? That's no, like a more correct. accurate screen sound. Now the cool thing I will say about this thing because you have a smoke pack in yours. Yeah. They actually kept the fencing. It might be as far as to see on camera. We'll get close ups of it, but they actually have the the, the mesh wiring inside the screen. Pack. Yeah. And they didn't have to do that. That's that's a small detail that wasn't required. But it's on the pack in the movies. It's screen accurate. The only thing I could have wished for that they would done they would have done with this end filter was you know they already gave this like made the uh, the lights on the cyclotron all work with the contact and everything. Mm -hmm. They could have just put a bright white LED in the end filter here, like most of us do, uh, and it would have looked great. But you know that's just like a minor minor nitpick, and you could very easily throw one in yourself. So that's basically the inside and how you switch it on and off to the thing. Uh, I'm, through the magic of editing, we're gonna change angles and we're gonna put the hose on and the Spangler wand on it. And then maybe Chris, you can show people the, actually let's do that now. Through the magic of editing, I'm gonna go grab Chris's stuff. This is the one thing everyone's been complaining about. So we should, I, I want Chris to address a little bit is the the, the yellow cable. Um, so I have cable. I have some mostly screen accurate. It's so smaller. No, actually it is the correct size. It's it's meant to oh, okay. collapse. Um, so it is the correct size. What's wrong about this actually is it's missing a single black thread. So the screen used to wire loom has a single black thread weaved through the whole thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually just discovered that thanks to the, uh, the unofficial Ghostbusters Discord last night. Uh, otherwise this is effectively the, same, the correct same stuff that they used in the film. Uh, and it's basically like a Chinese finger trap. You know, it's, it's like this this woven material that'll collapse down and kind of widen out. This is the stuff that, you know, I, I, if anybody's seen the Adam Savage tested video already, this is the stuff that he pulled out and used to replace this with. And this is very hard to find at the moment. Um, <laughs> it always is. It always is. Yeah. As, soon as, as soon as these things hit the market, this sort of stuff gets hard to find. It's the exact reason why I went out and bought a 10 foot segment of it you know, like a month after Afterlife came out. <laughs> You're gonna have to help me do that on my pack. We'll yeah. have to make a video about it, how to do that or something. Yeah, yeah, we can do a full, we can do like a full thing in the workshop. 
So I wanted to put that in, uh, just give a little shout out. Now let's do, let's go back to the, the wide shot and we will put the loom and the spangler wand on it. So now we're gonna attach the, the, the hose, the loom hose and the wand. Uh, this is not a how-to video, we're just gonna do it. We're not gonna get close-ups of it just because it's uh, kind of a pain in the ass. Where did mine, did you already take this out? I already took it out and set it ah, aside here. All right. So we're just, you should be able to just pop it in. So now the loom just goes in, would you have the batteries? Nope, there's no batteries involved. You just oh, plug that's that right. directly. That's right, they figured out a way to, to So it's gonna be, it. it's gonna take power from the pack and then it's also gonna take signals from that power from the pack. Which is really clever. Uh, I understand it was a fan who, in the community, who, who pointed figured out, out how you who figured out it. how they could do that. Um, that's good old electrical engineering. Yeah, and, and I wish I knew the name of that fan because I just, I would love to give them a shout out because that is so rad. We take the hose and the hose goes in the bottom. Down here. Oh yeah, the two little prong holes. Looks like, yep, it has a little spacer there. So Should you know exactly index how it goes. one way. Don't want it too tight. Yeah, I definitely want to get this sleeve off. Yeah, it feels bad, right? It just, like, feels, it just stiff. feels stiff. It just feels stiff. Yeah. But like the cool thing about having something, and I always mention this in my unboxing videos, is that because it's a malleable plastic, most of it is malleable plastic, it's durable. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, I, honestly, when I walked around with my pack of Hollywood, I was a little nervous because kids were surrounded and they, they want to touch and stuff, but some of my stuff is fragile. My ion arm is fragile. My thing, thing is fragile. Mm -hmm. Like, stuff can snap off and that, I have to replace, it's like a car, I have to replace the whole thing. You can't just take that off and replace it easily. Not a real scroll here, though, which kind of sucks. Yours has a real one, but yours is also... Yeah, yeah. Aluminium. Aluminium. All right, so then, so then we can turn it on. Oh, we turn it on through this, though. We can, we can go either way, yeah. So if you pop your wand. So we're gonna turn the wand on. Every time. Well, mine's wired differently, that's why. You realize that my, my, my wand is wired differently than your wand. It's wired in, incorrectly. Yeah, see, yeah, so I did it on mine, cause mine, the power is controlled. <laughs> So you're only getting the firing sound from there, huh? Yeah, yeah, I think that is the idea. I think it, it just powers it. I don't think there's any kind of communication other than power. Would have been nice if it went faster when you fired and then stopped. Well, it's in 84 mode. Does it do that? I mean, does it do faster when you fire in, in afterlife mode? I think, I think it does respond to the timer if you hold it all the way to the overheat. Let's find out. No, it doesn't. Funny I think it's just power, and that's okay. Yeah, like that's, that's not a, that's not a deal ben, uh, deal breaker at all. Yeah. What the hell? Not yeah, weird. It's just a little buggy. That's yeah. fine. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, it doesn't. Nothing on the wand other than power communicates with the pack. So if you no. help, you hold the button down, or if you you know if you, if it overheats, it's not going to slow down or speed up, and that's fine. That requires like a computer inside the thing, right? Other than just voltage and an on and off switch. I get yeah. it. Yeah, it, so, it requires more input outputs going on. So that said, I do, un from what I understand, the volume slash vibration control knob on the wand will control the sound or the volume on the pack. Well, let's find out. One, that's what I've been told. Two, three, and you said the volume. So that's going down. I don't hear anything. Neither do I. That's okay. You know, that was that's okay. Like I was amazed that they were even get the power to to, to, to communicate with it. And then you that's how you turn it off. Again. So now we're gonna do the slime on it because we haven't really talked about the slime yet. Yeah. Or this is not the, the slime. slime. This is this is the 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 marshmallow. Does it look purple? Or is it just reflecting the lights? Does it look reddish? I can't tell. Uh, it could be light reflecting from different surfaces. But like you put like little like slime stuff on here. Like, I don't even know where it goes. It kind of goes anywhere, right? Yeah, I think it's kind of made to be able to, you can kind of see, you can sort of wrap it and then hook it on itself on any kind of part of the pack, pretty much. I mean, it's, it's a cute little add-on. I don't think it's bad by any means. Oh yeah, I see. So it locks in. Mm -hmm. It locks in underneath. It's got it. a little hook and hook and loop thing. I just want to do it because I know Adam Sandwich is like I didn't. I, he didn't do it at all. I so don't I have any to, interest in I this. I wanted to. Yeah, I wanted to give it a little <laughs> bit of credit because someone did work on it, and yeah, I can appreciate when someone works on something. Put this 
here. I do, we, do have, we do have the slime coming. This, if, you, if you haven't gotten the green slime because you're a Hasbro Pulse backer, or Hasbro Pulse subscriptions, whatever, they're sort of premium whatever, plus or yeah. whatever it's called, like you'll get it separately. I do like it. I mean, it, does, it, doesn't, it doesn't look bad. I think it looks cute. It's it's like a neat little like kind of character detail, right? Like, and especially if you're at a convention and you're with a bunch of other Ghostbusters, something like this is unique and makes you kind of stand, stand out. Stand out a little bit yeah. more. The the instructions tell you exactly where they can go, uh, but well, and where where they're kind of designed where they're to go. They're kind of designed. I think one's supposed to go here, right? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. with that said, oh, I don't know where to put these on. Mama. Let's just wrap this up because this is a long video already. So, Chris. What would you rate this on a scale of one to ten in terms of value and detail and all that stuff? Like, what's your rule? My oh bad. my goodness! In terms of in terms of the detail that you get for the value that you're paying, mm -hmm. like I, I I'm gonna stick with my guns. I'm gonna say it's an eight out of ten. I would put higher just because I'm less of a stickler for that stuff. Like nine out of ten. There are some like little things that stop from being a ten out of ten. The the for me is like the weathering down here needs to be redone. The paint it needs job, a little yeah. more texture. Um, what would you say, like the, the, the nylon tube? I don't, I don't mind it so much as this one. Is it was a little dirtier, uh, but yeah, I, I don't like the color on it. It's too faded out. It is too faded out. But like, at least it's real. Like this could have been like if they did this plastic, it would look terrible. Mm -hmm. But like, I mean, everything can be taken apart to paint or remove or replace. Like they really did. Like I'm not gonna open this on the inside. Uh, this is and this is just a, is one is the the another thing that stops from being ten out of ten is the frosted glass. I don't know why they went frosted glass. It's a little it's a little odd a nod detail there, but like the stuff that like the iron ar the iron arm is is actual metal. There's a ton of metal pieces on mm -hmm. this in general, and it's just for you can't be at the price point like a like total like a five hundred and twenty dollars plus tax. Yeah, is yeah. basically it's, what it costs. It's, it's incredible, especially compared to like. Yeah, what what did yours cost? Like thirteen, fifteen hundred, something like that. I think it was twelve hundred dollars. Twelve. Yeah. Yeah, and like I spent twenty eight hundred on mine. You know, like yeah, just the price point. Like by comparison, like like this is a fraction of the cost for the same full size mm -hmm. thing. All all of the major detailing is there. Like unless you are a super fan like me, you're not gonna you know nobody's gonna look at it and be like, oh that's wrong. Um, you know, yeah, no, these are awesome. So, I mean, unfortunately, it, this was a HasLab project, and to, you know, if they kept their trend to date, no HasLab project was ever released publicly, like on store shelves. Uh, I know stuff usually they do that is because it's sh expensive or there's no shelf space, right? Like, especially for this thing, like stores won't be able to carry this. It's too hard, it's too big. But um, I mean, I hope they release, they do another wave of it or they do another backer round of it because people who missed out, uh, maybe they couldn't afford it at the time or were still on there or wanted to see it, the final product. You know? Bring us the HasLab Slime Blower. Yeah, slime, HasLab Slime Blower, HasLab PKE, HasLab Ghost Trap, and HasLab Gigameter. Oh, man. Please and yeah. thank you. Yes, please um, and thank you. But anyway, guys, if you like this unboxing review, be sure to hit that like, subscribe, notification button. It's three small clicks for you. It means the world to us. For more unboxing and reviews, you're already in the right place. You're on shacknews.com.